welcome. Lesson five, locking in with the rhythm section. If one must bring oneself down to that level to mix with those people, then we have to study them. We have to study them in depth. I know I am one for Christ's sake. So let's 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 delve into the into the the abyss of the rhythm section, the world of the drummer, the world of the bass player. Uh, so they're not all bad. They're not all bad. They're not all bad. So what I'm going to talk about today is how we can lock in with the rhythm section. Okay, this is a way we can get good synergy uh, with the group. The way we can improve our groove playing, our rhythm playing, and make our lines fit and sync uh, with the rhythm section. Okay, now three main points that I want to talk about today. The first one is visualizing yourself as a rhythm section player. Now this is very unsavory, um, seeing the world from the point of view of a drummer. Goodness knows what they get up to in their spare time. We won't even talk about that. Um, but what we can do is we can imagine ourselves at a drum kit. That's not too bad, is it? So we can picture ourselves from the point of view of that person, that strange individual who sits at the drum stool and hits his cymbals now and again. So, so we can feel what the guy plays or the girl plays with their right foot. We can feel what they're playing with their right hand. Um, and we can put them on like a suit, a very, very weird suit. But we put that drummer on like a suit and we can see the drums out in front of us like you're hallucinating, like you're on drugs, that kind of thing. Uh, I've, I've heard, so I've heard. Um, so you put yourself on like a suit and you imagine the drums in front of you. You imagine the cymbals and you imagine yourself playing this beat, which I'm going to play for you just now. Yes, that one. So what we're doing is we're kind of getting a sense of the kind of kinesthetic, that is the touchy-feely kind of thing. This is getting very, very nasty, isn't it? Um, we're getting a sense of the kinesthetic um, sort of approach that drummers have. So they feel the vibration of when they hit the drum. That uh, travels up the stick into their hand and into their what's left of their brain after years and years of uh, playing too loud. Um, and then they can get a sense of where that fits. So when I teach drum, my drum students, um, we, uh, we, I teach them to actually match up that feeling, that feeling of vibration in the hand with the feeling of vibration in their foot when they hit the drum pedal. So, so that's how that kind of works. So what we can do is we can, lo we can lock, lock, on, lock onto that as, as guitarists or, or um, improvisers in general. Um, we can get a sense of what they're doing. The same with a bass player. We can visualize, put that bass player suit on, um, like it, like the weird ill-fitting suit that it is, but still, try and put it on. Um, and you could get a sense of the, the kinesthetic nature of how they're plucking the string, or picking, um, but mainly plucking, I think, yes. We'll, we'll call it plucking. Strange word, but we'll call it plucking, like you pluck a chicken, um, that kind of thing. So that, that sense of playing across the string, and that vibration, that kind of snappy thing, that's what we're latching onto here. This is a touchy-feely thing. So, especially with with um, with rhythms and sort of grooves like the two tracks that I've that I'm going to demonstrate here today, these are tempos that I've specifically chosen because they're kind of awkward. Okay, they're not nice sort of 120 beats per minute uh, um, kind of walks in the park. They're slow and they kind of have lots of subdivisions, or the, at least they have the possibility for subdivisions and that kind of thing. So. That's why I've chosen these two tracks. Both the tracks, as always, are available on my Bandcamp. They're a pound each. They're really cheap, and they took me took me uh, a lot of time to make. And they're, I think they're, they're sort of good. They're, they're like basically slotting in with a band. So all of the tracks on the are on the va uh, on the Bandcamp. They're kind of like that. They're just like sitting in an, in in a band situation. So that's uh, so so see what you think. Um, head on over to the Bandcamp. The links in the video show notes. Um, and these two tracks are there. There's a slow one and a fast one. I'm going to demonstrate these two now. So. The second thing I'm going to talk about is note lengths. Okay, they're very important with groove, with with groove playing. Okay, and what we can do here is we can use the bass drum and the snare drum to start and finish our notes. Okay, so this is what I'm going to demonstrate in a sec with the track. Um, but I think the most important thing to talk about, really, and the thing that will that will get you in perfect synergy or, or or heading towards that way with the rhythm section is to concentrate your listening on the highest common denominator. That is the 16th notes, or the 8th notes, or the, the 32nd notes, okay? Um, so with this track here, we've got the 16th notes. So you 
can really pick that out with your hearing, just like a tar- like you see it as a target. Okay, really, it's a very abstract thing to talk about um, seeing or focusing on something with your ears. But that sound, you can pick that out from a cr- from the crowd of of weirdness that's going on with the drums, and you can lock into that. Once you lock onto the highest common denominator of the rhythm, i.e., in this case, it's the sixteenth notes. You can then. And rather than concentrating on the on the quarter notes or the eighth note, da, 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 you concentrate. And with the bass line, it's doing sixteenth sixteenth notes as well. And that's something you can really focus on. Okay, so it's a, a very clear thing that you can just go right. I'm going to grab hold of that now. I'm going to concentrate on the hi hat and all of the syncopations in between. Okay. And that will allow you to set, to then have a have a target to to match your sixteenth notes um, that you're playing, either lines or rhythm. Like. Okay, so in your mind you're focusing on those 30 second notes and that's with your picking. Okay, then we'll try it with this slower track as well and I'll, I'll explain with the slower track. So the 16th notes here. And pick that out with your ears, those high sounds. Put that drum suit on like a, like a weird fitting suit that it is. Imagine that drummer sitting there. You're focusing on his right hand. focusing on that and that will be your kind of sort of default state if you like so you're always going to be in synergy with that highest common denominator and it's really important to think about it in those sorts of terms okay so with the backing track um, I'm going to demonstrate now the second thing my second point which is note lengths which is really important okay and note lengths will define the groove okay lots of short notes lots of long notes lots of legato notes all of those kind of things have certain effects on the groove okay now with this slower track, which I'm going to play to just now, um, okay, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to start the note or start the phrase um, with a long note with the bass drum. So imagine that when you hit that bass drum, bonk, and when the snare comes down, bonk, we're going to stop that note. Okay, so that what you're doing straight away is you're gaining synergy with the beat on the drums. Okay, so let's just demonstrate that. For Notice that with the syncopations, they're always very nice and short. Okay, keep them really, really short, uh, and that's going to lock in. So all the while you're visualising those 30 second, oh, sorry, the 16th notes on the hi hat, and you're catching all of those syn- syncopations really nice and short because that um, you'll notice the hi hat sound is very, is very kind of staccato and short. So that's the kind. And, the, and the, the things on the on beats can be a longer. So 
So you've got that note length there. So that kind of defines the groove. And you hear players um, like, well, the Red Hot Chili Peppers are a prime example of that. That kind of, this kind of sluggy, kind of slow funk. Um, it's fantastic rhythm playing um, from the guitarist. So you've got this kind of really nice mix of long and, long and short staccato notes. And you can do that on the guitar. It's really easy because you can just pull, um, you can hammer on or hammer off your, if, with your left hand. So if we're thinking about hallucinating from the point of view of the drummer as well, that just, that just sort of fills in other parts of the jigsaw puzzle here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a bit more playing and I'm going to just talk about some of my approaches with the phrasing here as well. So what we need is, uh, we, need, we need a, what do we need? We need a rhythm section, don't we? Let's, have a, let's welcome the rhythm section. Let's welcome, welcome the drummer and we'll welcome the bass player as well. So uh, hi guys, how are you doing? Right, let's do some playing. So straight away, check out the snare drum. So we can build our phrase around this. So we've got that nice combination of long and slow notes, and, and, and you'll see the way that it really defines the groove. It kind of subdivides with your solo, with the way that you're using your 16th notes. With, with the short notes on the syncopations, it also means you can lead into phrase it. Etc, etc. Okay, so we've got this. thing I like to do when I'm playing this kind of funk and groove stuff when I'm producing my lines is slightly overplay, slightly strum the note because any kind of big movements are going to help your rhythm playing because you're naturally using the elasticity in your um, in your in your arm so it's a kind of very Hendrix Hendrixy kind of thing he was kind of like often played two note so, so partly down to the fact that he's being, you know, in a genius way, obviously slightly kind of slapdash and lazy with his picking, like semi-strumming, um, but that kind of gives that really nice 
rhythmic, flowy kind of effect. Rather than the kind of small... Rather than the small movements, which are kind of going to be harder to kind of get really nice and in the pocket with this... With this, this is why this tempo is so challenging, because um, you have this kind of... Uh, you know, it's not, not an easy tempo, because it sort of sits between fast and comfortably fast and comfortably slow. Um, where you have to really be relaxed and really in the pocket. Okay, so. Yeah, so we go. Bass drums, snare drum. So you got that. So you're kind of almost playing the drums with your rhythm part. And you can kind of approximate that sound. That's what I was talking about at the beginning with hallucinating being a drummer. You can approximate that sound of the snare drum and the sound of the bass drum with dead notes, with slappy kind of strum things, with big exaggerated strumming, and the things in between. You've got your dead notes and you've got your syncopations with the picking as well. Good exercise to do with this is to stick on one chord, dead the notes out. And then you can bring your fingers to the fretboard. When you want to play the accent or the you know the, the sort of high the emphasis of the of the rhythm part. So you So you actually it's pretty much strumming all of the strings as well, so you get a nice strong rhythmic bass. This this will kind of train your left hand to be to sort of connect with the fretboard at those points. Just stay in one area, stay with one chord, and then you can kind of do that. Come in and out of Use all your fingers. And sometimes you can just minimise that down to an octave. But I'm pretty much strumming that whole... See how big my strumming is here? I've got the kind of pretty much the full width of the guitar body. It's not, it's not kind of in position, as it were. long and short notes so that kind of applies to your rhythm playing as well as your lead playing so so to recap hallucinate being a drummer visualize from the point of view of the drum kit sitting at that drum stall in that weird territory that they call the drum kit okay put the drummer on like a weird suit that he is and imagine he she she is and imagine you're playing that beat, see the drums in front of you and imagine the sound that you're making as well. So that will give you like all of the clues that, that the, you know, the, 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 the drum is kind of giving you in a way. It will sort of allow you to see through their eyes, see from their perspective. Uh, okay, note lengths, really, really important. Okay, Ex experiment with this, but generally as a rule, long notes on the on beats, short notes on the syncopated or up beats. Okay, and that will give you a nice kind of pocket feel, really, really nice. And then big movements with your, with your picking. Um, there's nothing subtle about kind of playing in this in this sort of groove style um, and the really important one here is the highest common denominator that's what I'm going to call it so the so the uh, um, the set the 30 seconds notes think about and that will subdivide in your mind um, or, or with the faster track here um, the sixth and that sort of fasting as well and you can visualize and you can practice with your metronome or your, the drum genius app which I thoroughly recommend by the way you can practice just with your strumming and rhythmic playing getting that um, two. Um, one two I started playing on its own that was weird sorry about that yeah, so you can really kind of connect those 16th notes with your picking to the 16th notes that you pick out with your ear, 16th notes that you pick out with your ear on the hi-hat. Okay, and some of the ghost notes on the snare drum as well. I recommend watching drummers play, see how they play the ghost notes with their left, okay, because that gives you a sense of the seesaw nature of how rhythms are made. 
Okay, so have a play, have a have a have a have a go at that, and imagine being and seeing the drum kit from their position. Okay, because that will give you really good clues as to how they're kind of constructing their side of the um, of, the, of the, the musical input here. So, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Oh, 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 o